Summer is in session at Icon Park. Welcome to episode four, season two of Summer Sessions, um, our last for the calendar year. Uh, my name's Christian Filippo, your host. Our producer is Rosaruki behind the camera. And joining us today is uh, the man who'll probably be, re- be remembered as one of Carlton's 2023 heroes. Um, we're sure his finals campaign will be on the agenda at some point, as will his first 12 months at Icon Park as a whole. Um, some called him Mr. September this year. He's known around these parts as Sheriff. Um, uh, we'll just call you Blake Akers for the episode. Mate, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, mate. You can kind of get on. Is that a lie or is that is that genuine? Nah, that's, that's genuinely a lie, yeah. So, <laughs> genuinely yeah. a lie, nice. Nice. Well, are you are you a fan of the show? Um, oh, I've tuned into a few little snippets you put out there, but not... Um, so that's a no? Oh, I don't really have time. That's okay. You're that's a busy a man. man. I'll give you a chop out and ask what the first question is, even though you probably should know if you do listen to this podcast all the time. But... Um, Blake Akers, what is your go-to karaoke song? Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Even the boys know I'm not a big fan of singing and karaoke. Um, they try to make me do these carols at the end of season Chrissy party, which I'm refusing to do again this week <laughs> uh, for the second year in a row. And yep. I'll refuse again next year when they ask me to do it. But um, karaoke, if I was to sing anything, it'd be more of a country sort of theme. It'd probably be like The Gambler or something. Nice. Kenny Rogers. Yep, beautiful. Are you, are you anti-carols or anti-Christmas? Love Christmas, just I hate singing. Okay. I, yeah, I don't have any, I'm not a good voice for singing, so it's not me. Will you ever relent? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> after a flag, will you get up and do a Stephen Kernahan stand by your man by any chance, or you'll just refuse nah, to? No, nah, I'll refuse every year, and they'll, I reckon they'll keep trying to make me do it, and yeah. I'll refuse, so I'll be refusing again on Saturday. Well, all the best, mate. This is actually going out <laughs> uh, after the Christmas party on the weekend, so... Um, yeah. But you're saying there's absolutely no chance that's going to change and you're not going to be singing. No, nah, Charlie's avid, avid, like, surely thinks I'm getting up there, but yep. there's not a chance. <laughs> well, we'll ask what your actual plans, plans are for the Christmas break. You're a big Christmas fan. Yep. If you just let us know, what's the, uh, what's the plan over the break coming up? Um, we'll head back to we're at our Chrissy party with all the boys and the staff Saturday. And then um, I'll head back to Perth on Monday for just uh, four days and then head up north to Onslow where mum and dad are at the moment in WA and then do like five days there then back to Perth for one day then I'll come back to Melbourne um, for New Year's and finish up there what's on the agenda when you're back home uh, I'll be fishing a lot um, I've got the boat up in um, in Onslow so I'll be out there fishing I think and going after some Spanish mackerel and that so it'll be yeah I'll be the main thing um, is it easy to get back home uh, oh, I didn't get back over the break to be honest yeah um, I used to get back a lot when I was younger, but not not these days. It's sort of just um, mum and dad moved up north now, so yep. um, I've got a few mates there, but I see them most of the time throughout the year. So um, and then when I do go back, they're usually working, so it's pretty hard to see them. So get a bit bored back there if I head back and mum and dad aren't there. I've heard there's about one flight that'll get you there and oh, one this, flight that'll get you back. This is up north, yeah. yeah. No, that's um, yeah, one flight a week in and out. So I'm s- <laughs> not I wouldn't say I'm stuck up there for five <laughs> days, but yeah, Got that mum and dad. I'm up there for five with them, which is. Which is going to be fun. Can't wait. Uh, what happens with the dogs when, when you're going? Are they coming up with you? Or? Oh, I, they used to, but um, my partner's up. Uh, she, her parents live up in Portland, Country Vic, so they'll, um, they'll just go back there with her over Chrissy and um, sort of like, it's not a farm, but it's a big property. They love it. They run around all day and have a feel, great time. They've featured on our channels a few times, but for those who aren't aware, for our, our listeners and viewers, let us know about about your two, <laughs> your two dogs. Oh, I've had um, Lola and Harley, two long hair sausage dogs. Um, had Lola since my first year getting in the AFL and um, they're getting old now. Then nine and seven now, just had their, their birthdays last week. So they're, they're getting old, but they're still kicking on pretty well. And Lola's a bit of a, you know, I don't want to say it, but she's a, the naughty one. She yep. doesn't like kids and that. So um, I've started muzzling up now when I walk her to the parks and this little cute little sausage dog, dog with a muzzle big muzzle on yeah <laughs> just makes everyone feel a bit safer <laughs> um, will they ever be TikTok famous like Harry Mackay's dog Bunny <laughs> I actually did a few TikToks of them but um, didn't really take off and um, yeah I sort of stopped doing that reliably informed that Bunny had an 18 million view TikTok <laughs> no in way. the last few weeks so <laughs> it's a good effort I won't ever get that is, there, not... is there any jealousy around the uh, there's a few dog owners amongst the playing group yeah I think they all just for me I just love dogs but um, some people will say they don't like some certain dogs, but um, I love most dogs. You just love them all. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, you caught up with a few teammates while over in Japan. I think it seemed to be the one overseas trip that our players could go on over the break. Um, first of all, how was how was that? 
No, oh, I loved it. Japan's great. Um, a lot of walking, a lot of uh, sightseeing and stuff, and the food there's unreal. But yeah, caught up with um, Youngy and uh, Boydie one night and had dinner with them and sort of did a bit of a tour around Kyoto in Japan, and that, that was cool. And then obviously, um, poor Fish isn't, isn't here more, anymore, but caught up with him on the last two days, and that was um, that was pretty fun. Yeah. Podcast royalty around these parts is fish. fish so, yeah. uh, <laughs> shout out if you're listening, mate. You're probably not. Um, <laughs> what, what was it about? What was it about Japan that it seemed like all the boys were keen to go? Or was it just I don't there know. was a two week block that they could go on, and that's why you decided to go? It's a weird one because not many people think about going to Japan over the off season. Yeah. And um, this year, so everyone was there. I saw Charlie Cameron there at one stage. Um, I think Kempi Walshy and those boys got over yep. there as well. But um, I don't know, it's something different and. Is the direct you can get the direct flight there as well, so you don't have to do the layover there. So that was just made it a bit easier. But yeah, it's a, we- it's a weird one, but it was um, it's highly recommended. Um, closer to home, you're in Richmond. Are you going to follow your teammates moving from Richmond to the north? Because it seems like you're <laughs> one of the only ones left out there. Nah, not a chance. No, <laughs> I, um, no, nothing, nothing against this side of the area, but I find Richmond's is very central um, for everything. I've got a lot of mates still that live sort of Bayside and. Um, South Yarra way and then um, all the boys all this way but I feel like I'm just 20 minutes from either way which is pretty convenient you, you, you spoke just after um, the season finished last year that you're well and truly caught up in all the footies, footy finals fever when you're uh, living in Richmond yeah it's hard a bit, to avoid it's a buzz around there yeah. um, I thought I'd be you know walking to games and walking home but um, so much going on and <laughs> especially um, yeah when there's so much atmosphere around those around the G when we're playing well um no, nah, it's, it's great to live and be a part of it, though. It was good. Um, leaving WA, it's very rare that you see someone from WA get drafted to Melbourne, go back to Perth, and then come back to <laughs> <laughs> come back to Melbourne. I guess was it a hard decision to to leave there, or what was the motivation behind it? Uh, no, nah, not not really. I, I when I was at Saints, I loved I loved living in Melbourne, I loved the lifestyle, and um, that's not that's not the same thing against Perth. But um, I love going to Perth as well. But I find Perth's best time of year is like October to Feb when the, the sun's out and it's um you get the beach every day and, and I still get that in my off season when I get to go back and over Chrissy and that so I get feel like I get the best of both worlds I get the I get the Perth lifestyle and the this sort of summer and then I get the Melbourne winter which has all the footy and all the sort of things going on around here at the time and um so I sort of feel like I'm juggling both really well at the moment which I love are you a footy head oh uh, not not when I first started but I've sort yeah. of got into it now and um so you sort of feel like you learn a lot about who you play and, and all the other players around. Yeah. Feels like that's the opposite. A lot of people start as that and then they kind of nah. lose interest in it when in footy when it becomes their job. But you're the other. You've gone the nah, other way. The way I was um, when I was first drafted to the Saints, I was we were flying over to Colorado for our preseason camp after I drafted three days before, and I was sitting next to someone and I thought he was um, a coach or something because he was this weathered old guy. Turns out to be Sam Fisher, who <laughs> was, was 34 at the time and still playing on and the, the list, but I didn't yeah. know he was on our team. But So that's how naive I was when I first got drafted. And um, But yeah, learned, learned all that stuff pretty quick. You knew who Ed Kerno was when you arrived? Here, <laughs> I knew Ed Kerno was, yeah. yes. That's, <laughs> that's pretty hard to miss. Um, mates around the club, 12 months on, you obviously arrived end of end of last year. Um, I guess who's taken you under the wing and made you feel welcome, not only on the field, but, but off it? Yeah, well, I've lost Fish. So I was pretty close with him, but... Um, yeah, Jack Silvani, pretty good with. Mitch McGovern's, he's, he's a bit of a laugh. And um, yeah, Cripper, all the sort of the WA guys there, Motlop, Bot. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of them. And There's a fair few of you, WA boys. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, it, was, um, it makes it easier when you sort of go back home and you get, get a train with them as well on the break and that and sort of have that in common. But um, yeah, I worked close, closely with Ollie last year and me and him sort of pretty close in that sort of space. and. Um, hopefully keep building that bond and that relationship going forward with sort of our roles on the footy field at the same time. You're a bit flat that he's left the locker beside you in the locker room? That was a weird one. Yeah. Um, me and Doc are sort of a bit, not sure why he's done it because he you know, played his 20 odd games in his first year in that number. So, and to get on the locker at Carlton, I think you've got to be 100 games in the yeah. one locker. So he's put him back a year there, which he, my, <laughs> games are hard to come by sometimes. And, um, <laughs> So he's he's backing himself there to get his hundred in the in the number four now, but a bit of a weird one because that uh, fourteen suited him, I reckon. Well, that passage of play was, yeah, I what, know, 14, but, 15, 13. I know, 
I, I'm surprised and I've voiced my disappointment in him. <laughs> um, but uh, no, nah, it's, I don't know, he sort of wanted to make a move and all the other boys in his year made the move as well. He does look good out there in the number four, I will say that. He does, it suits him. Um, still uh, flat. Still flat, yeah. Horatio <laughs> uh, is good though, he seems like he's um, a good fella and we got him in between us now, I don't have to... Um, sort of clean up Oli was a bit messy so and Orazio seems pretty switched on with that sort of stuff well Orazio has been 13 I think for his whole career was there any oh was he was there any I didn't debate know that. of whether or not you'd I think, I'm pretty sure he was <laughs> I can't really be afforded in giving up games if I'm trying to get up my name on a locker at a club so um, <laughs> you've already left two of them <laughs> yeah I didn't, haven't got anywhere so I, I need to bank up my games but I didn't know that um, yeah if you if you ask, I would have um, thought about it but um, well you kept the 13 from Freo as well no, I was, what was I? Three, I was, nine? Nah, nine, yeah. I've three gone eight. I've gone 40. Da- 40? Drafted at 40, three games. Yeah. 70 odd at number eight. Yeah. Then number nine and 13. Well, to be fair, moving from the 40, it makes sense, but it's a high number. You've got to get one. out of that. Not from 14 to four, like Ollie's done. Nah, no, and if 40 is a big big na- uh, number at the club as well. There's some good players on that locker and... Yeah, it's weird. Maybe there's something that I've got to sort of look into a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> um, he wants to become an inside mid, I've heard as well, and take he's, after Walsh. He's, he's sort completely of, um, leaving you. Sort of, yeah, I heard him talking about he wants a different mentor this next year. He wants to work off Walsh and leave me, so that's all right. I'll find someone else to pick up and get on the other wing, I guess. Binzy. <laughs> Binzy, maybe, yeah. He's yeah. pretty eager to get a game, so we'll see. You still love Ollie, though, don't you? It's all love. Yeah, sure. it's all love. It's all fun and games with him. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, yeah, no, he's a very good player and love working with him. I reckon it'd be impossible to be mad at him. Oh, you can. He, he, oh, you can? The, the okay. messy side of him. Okay. Yep. The locker room stuff. Me and Doc made him um, get all the deodorant and chewies and stuff for the year and filled in his locker. But um, yeah, so he's still doing that for us over at the number four. We've still made him stock up with all that. Yeah, that's, that's his good dirt. Uh, that's just, his sort of thing he's got to do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if he's left you now, he's got yeah. to just make sure you keep him accountable. Yeah. Um, still running with Sheriff? Yep, still going with that. Yep. yep. Hasn't really got the same traction it did at Freo, like the fine sort of side of it. I've sort of a bit more disrespect here with the boys. Some of the boys don't let me have my license to go after a few guys, but sort of happy not doing that as yep. much because there's a bit taxing on the body and um, <laughs> thinking of gags and st- things to stitch up boys with. So I think Weeders is running with that at yep. the moment. Is it still Weeders? It's still Weeders, yeah. He's a um, very funny guy if you've had a chance to talk to him. Um, why are you laughing there, Mike? <laughs> oh, you know him. <laughs> <laughs> For those who aren't yeah. aware? Oh, he just, yeah, he gives a lot and he's always, um, yeah, he's always, I don't know how to say it, open, I don't know. <laughs> I love this. Um, but, but I think when um, Dale Thomas found out that Weeders was doing the fines, he was a bit taken aback that <laughs> he's one of the more serious customers around here. Well, originally yeah. he was Weeders. Um, has he has he mellowed out a little bit? Is he Does he embrace it? <laughs> no. Oh, he's a, he's a bit grey. <laughs> so, I don't know how he's got the roles, Fines Master, because he doesn't give much, to be honest. But he has Cots. Cots sort of helps him and yeah. bounces off each other. We sort of because Cots is sort of the other extreme. Yeah, probably takes it a bit too far the at times. The two biggest extremes at the footy club. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably middle it out there. A few a few thought that um, changing tack now that your your first week back at training Charlie Kernow was wearing the number 13 and <laughs> you were wearing the number 30 a few people thought you had changed numbers first of all <laughs> um, what was the inspiration behind behind that or Charlie <laughs> just picked up your jumper oh, I don't know <laughs> the, the, oh, I'm not going to give you the tr- the full truth behind yep. it um, <laughs> but um, Charlie wanted to look a bit you know leaner and tighter with a smaller jersey on so he wanted to you know show off all the work he's put in over the break yep. and um, I was sort of happy to chuck on the XL there and <laughs> <laughs> run around with the sort of the bigger jersey on. So just did that for the first week and um, obviously back in trading now. So I've got my jersey back on. We'll just say that Charlie wanted to look... Yeah, he wanted to look lean. and Yeah. And he's looking lean. He's looking okay. very good, yeah. Yeah. Caleb Marshbank as well. Looking lean. A lot of comments about his just looks like he's really trimmed out. I love these preseason cliches of <laughs> people just looking at uh, preseason. There's always a photos. few guys that yeah. have bulked up or slimmed down, yeah. isn't there? I think the feedback from Archie is that he's slimmed down. I don't know if that's true or not, but that seems to be the feedback. That's Much feedback on me slimming down. Um, <laughs> they just talk about some go- some goal against Melbourne whenever. Oh you yeah, that funny one. Enough. Um, which seems like the perfect segue to talk about it. <laughs> Are you aware of what you did in September for a lot of people? Oh, <laughs> probably not. At, not at the time. I yeah. thought it was just a 
you know, just winning a game and we go to the next one and hopefully try and get that one and get into a granny because it's a bit more bigger picture at the time. Or sort of not bigger picture, but narrowed in on what, what we're trying to get done yeah. there. So um, I wish we could have got through and um, beat Brisbane up there, which would have been massive for us and got us into a granny. And But you know, we, we will learn a lot from that, that game and um, another step cl- closer next year, let's hope, and we go again. That's a very mature answer, but I want to go back to the game. <laughs> the goal against... Again, the more has it dawned I'm on you. Trying to move on from it. <laughs> no, we'll, well, we'll move on eventually, but I guess did it... Has it dawned on you? When did it dawn on you about kind of the, the size of, of what happened? Um, I guess how many people have stopped you in the street for a couple of yeah. times over the last few months? It's, it's probably like the opening thing most guys would start with is sort of asking about that goal and how it felt and stuff. And... Um, I try to give the humble response every time because <laughs> I don't really want to sort of live back there. I want to sort of move yep. on and um, get to the next stage. And but it was a good, um, yeah, it was a good moment for me and the team. And um, everything went right in the play. And yeah, as I said, I wish it could have kept going and probably would have been a bit more special if um, we we went all the way with it. The goal was obviously incredible. Andy Ma on commentary. Um, said do you believe in miracles <laughs> I think the bigger miracle was that you were still standing because you nearly poleaxed yourself against Jake Lever about a minute beforehand did you not uh, yeah well I went to um, I went to smother his kick and just try to make him kick over some hands at the time and after I did that I was just like I was pretty gassed and thought let's just roll the dice here um, go forward and because I knew if we were going to um, the only way we'll lose the game is if they get another mark and so I sort of thought, and a lot of teams drop an extra number back or two numbers back. So I was like, I'll just be, they never drop a winger back. So I'll just be the guy that sort of be, I'll be that outnumber player because I knew we already sent Gov back and Kempi to go, like Gov and Kempi to go forward. And so it was sort of just a bit of a roll the dice play and sort of come off really good. <laughs> um, you want to move on too? We'll, we will move on, but just one more. Uh, Kuda was here on Saturday um, yep. for the player induction and he's been asked about the 99 prelim ever since then are you aware that you'll probably be getting the same questions for the rest of your <laughs> oh, life oh. <laughs> Kuda's probably a bit more bigger name than me so um, no I don't uh, I, yeah I don't let's Moving move on, on. <laughs> let's move on <laughs> <laughs> that's fine uh, we'll, we'll go to pre-season training um, obviously you ended the year last year with that that shoulder injury um, I feel like people weren't sure if you were carrying that injury it was just a weird running gait that you had but um, how are you feeling now is it all on the men now and when can we expect you in full training um, yeah, no, I probably sort of didn't really heal quite as I was liking over the break. So I just got a little clean up a couple of weeks ago and um, nothing nothing major at all. Just like clean, cleaned all the stuff that was sort of bothering me um, up. And yeah, so I've, I missed 10 days I couldn't run for because of the surgery. You got to wait for the scar to heal and then um, just been building up ever since then. So um, got a good three weeks off over Chrissy, which I'll um, just keep working on my running and stuff. And then um, hit the ground running, started Jan. I'll be full training. I'm glad you mentioned your running. Last week we were out in the track. There was a running group behind you and you just thought <laughs> you'd take off before them to give the impression that you were yeah. absolutely burning Jackson bins off. I was hoping you got a photo of me with the group <laughs> behind. But was that tactical? No, I was. I, I knew I had to start. I was in a different running block as, as them, but I was. Um, I thought I'd get a quick head start and make it look like I'm burning these blokes. But um, <laughs> big smile on my face and... Nah. It looked like you were doing it easy. The boys weren't, weren't liking it because I did one run with them and I nah, didn't like it because I was only doing a minute effort. They had two minute efforts. So, yeah. Well, first day back next year is the 2K time trial, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Uh, or hasn't been done yet. I um, feel like there's a lot of good runners around around the footy club now. I guess where do you fit in, in that mix? Yeah, they're a lot more. I thought I'm meant to be an uh, no, 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 okay runner and I come here and these guys are all absolutely humming with their running. So... Um, I'll be trying to get out of the two car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess a comparison like at, at your past clubs, I guess where you're up there and then now you're um, a bit further back. Or? I've always been around, oh, I don't know. I've never been like top five. It's sort of around that mark. But um, here it's a different story. There's a lot of absolute, yeah, really good athletes and good runners here. And obviously Ed's not here anymore. So he was one of the guys at the front leading the way there. And um yeah, so I don't, I'm not sure where I'll be around this year, but a lot of the guys can actually run two cars really well. Uh, and then there's Jackson Bins. Yeah. Even in the running blocks of training, he's taking it ultra seriously. Do you ever give him any feedback to maybe just wander back a bit or just go for it? 
Oh, sort of my feedback to him is he needs to get a bit stronger and put a bit of size on because he's running around with 60 kilos <laughs> and um, a few of us are lugging around 90. So um, that's probably the difference there. Um, be, be interesting to see if he, when he bulks up and, but um, no, nah, he's an he's a awesome athlete as well. And that's one of his greatest things is he's running and a lot of the guys tell him to back himself in with that sort of stuff. And that's what um, you sort of need to do if you want to be used as one of your strengths. You've got to show it out there and make sure you're bringing that to life every time you get a chance to. You're expecting Cotters to finally have someone to challenge him in the in the time trial next, next yeah, year? Yeah, they'll be close, um, those two. Be those, and then I think Ollie and Elijah will be going at each other as well for who the better brother is at running. Yeah. Um, Elijah already told me he's got Ollie covered and Ollie just shook his head. So <laughs> we'll see there. We'll see TBC on that one. Yeah, can't yeah. wait. Um, we'll move back to pre-season cliches just, just quickly. Um, again, one of our favourites here. I guess who's flying out in the track? Who's When someone asks you when you're walking down the street about who's going really well out there, who's your, who's your first answer? Um, haven't, obviously, I haven't been training with the main group a lot. Um, but I think, yeah, I'll go back to Binzi. He's been, I think he's come back in really good nick and he's already put, it, put a little bit of size on and still got his running to show it as well. Um, but yeah, this is the same guys that keep fronting up really. Charlie's come back and wearing the thirteen now, so <laughs> he's looking like he's slimmed down as well, which Has is to good. Maintain those standards. Yeah. Um, no, nah, I think the, the group, the whole, the whole group's in a really good space at the moment, and um, I think they're really eager to improve and um, you know really hungry to get back to where we finished last year and take that next step and keep building on what we finished. And who's ready for more midfield time? Well, big, big, big Ollie Hollands has come out and said he wants to play in there. So um, <laughs> you really disowned him, haven't you? It's hurt you. <laughs> well, I'm just disappointed in him. I thought he was going to be my partner in crime for the next couple Wingman of years. Wingman for life. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I think he's pretty. He's eager to add that to his game as long as still keep the wing stuff going and um, try to add some, you know, five six minutes a quarter in the midfield. So um, hopefully get him in there a bit and he can expand his game, um, which is exciting for us as a group as well because we know he can offer us a lot in there as well. We'll move to someone who you didn't know this question was coming. Uh, David Cunningham. <laughs> you've been pumping up your teammates. You've been giving plenty on Ollie Hollands. You got anything on David Cunningham for us? No, I don't have much. <laughs> I, <laughs> I um, he doesn't he doesn't say much at all. To be honest, there's nothing, and, nothing wrong with that. But no, nah, I don't have much at all. We got partnered up in the gym because you get put in partners for gym sessions now, and I didn't see him the whole session. So <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Just he was we... in there, but we don't we didn't work together. Yeah. So. <laughs> Gave me a walk past and said, good session today, mate. I'm like, thanks, mate. Good work, you too. <laughs> That's that was all it. it was, yeah. That's you meant, you to be, you meant to be together pushing the, uh, pushing the weights around, but no, nah, <laughs> no one to be saying. That's okay. We'll, uh, we'll get some stuff on him one day. One I don't day. know when that day is, but we'll get yeah. there one day. Um, Brody Kemp, we let you know about this. Um, he said, well, yesterday when we recorded the episode, but shock horror to the viewers <laughs> at home that this is actually going out. This, uh, this chat right now is going out next week. Um, but Kemp, he said, of his three teammates he wouldn't want to go on an overseas trip with. You were one of them. There wasn't a caveat to it. Um, his direct quote was, two days with you, you'd be one of his favourites. But 10 days, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, any thoughts on why that would be the case, what he's alluding to there? Oh, I sort of, I've had this sort of feedback in the past with, when, when I've gone on trips over two days that um, sort of get a bit... Oh, I'm sort of the guy that loves getting up and about early and um, just to keep attacking each day and getting stuff done and um, sort of enjoy myself when I get a chance to as well. So um, clearly Kempi's not up to that. 48 uh, hours max. Which I've seen. <laughs> um, yeah, clearly just can't handle handle the sheriff, <laughs> to be honest. So, Did you just refer to yourself in third person uh, like The Rock? I'll do that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit or a lot? Ah, oh, when I can. Yeah, when you can. <laughs> uh, and, and do you ever say Blake Akers or is it always The Sheriff? Ah, uh, it's always the sheriff. Okay. Yeah, gotta got got own it. I think so. Um, any dirt on any other teammates that you want to share? Considering Kempi threw you under the bus, this is your chance to go back the other way. Kempi, what do I have on Kempi? I don't have much on him. He's a he's, he's one of the good ones, to be honest. Yeah. I, I'm shocked he threw me under the bus. You can go someone else if you want. Give me some uh, ideas. Who should I go after? Uh, well, Matt Kennedy was on a few weeks ago, so if you've got anything on him. Matt Kennedy, he's, he's, he's one of the funny ones as well. Yeah. Um, Adam Chera, your teammates at Freo. It just seems like he's a bit of a Chera. Well, Chera, actually, I do have someone in Chera. This is quite disloyal what he did, but um, <laughs> me and Chera have the same birthday. And um, yep. every year I've messaged him happy birthday on the 7th of October, which is my birthday. And every yep. year he says, thanks, mate. Doesn't <laughs> He's never once said happy birthday back. Does he know what he's doing? 
No, he still doesn't know, I don't think. Except a few days later, his message and said, happy birthday, sorry. A few days later, but not on the day. And you've been teammates at two clubs. Two clubs. One club, when he first got traded to Carlton, he was having his um, birthday drinks at the left bank in Frio and um, put him some money behind the bar and invite all the boys. It was on the 7th of October as well, so yeah. invited me. You got a free <laughs> Free. <laughs> So we had our joint birthday, but he didn't realise it was my yep. birthday as well. So, but still waiting for a happy birthday on the day from him. We'll run this video back on the seventh of October next year, just to keep him accountable. Well, he gets tagged on the Carlton post every year. Well, we, we just, post it toge- Rose posts it together. Rose posts together. He's shocking. Oh well, he'll get there. Thanks, just a thanks, mate. He replies, not a happy birthday. <laughs> That's some great dirt on him. Shocking. I feel like no one's ever said a bad word about him as well. This is good. This is good to know. Yeah, Ches has changed a lot since his time <laughs> at Frio's. <laughs> Frio. Um, yeah, good, good man though. He's a, he's a good man. He's a good man. Um, he might actually feature in this next bit. Um, you didn't want to talk about your own goal, so we'll, we'll pivot to some of your teammates. Um, top three teammates you'd love to have kicking for the grand final. Kicking to win the granny. To win the granny. Uh, Chez, because I know he's a very good kick. Yep. Um, there's a, I reckon there's a few bits too. It's temperament as well. It's one in the big moment. Yeah, he's, all calm, he's pretty calm and chilled. Yep. Um, if it's like a... Anything outside like 40, I'm having Charlie probably kick it because he can kick a long one. And, yep. Um, Not inside 40, though. Oh, no, I'd probably have him anywhere, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one more. Um, who's a good kick? I'll go with Fog. Fog Fogarty. He doesn't miss him. Rarely misses. It's a nice one. It's a good one. Yeah. You know, obviously, Chesney He's calm as well. He's not. He doesn't really yeah. get caught up in the moment like a few others. Um. <laughs> Not having that like, like Tempe. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was um, that alluding to a game against Melbourne last year yeah, that might be referring to? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was keen not to talk about that one too much yesterday, yeah. so we'll move on from yeah. that one. Um, we'll finish off with the same way that we finish off again. We, we like um, hanging dirt on a bunch of the other boys, but we'll finish off with a nice, wholesome answer to, to close the podcast. Um, Sheriff, why do, you, why do you play football? Why do I play footy? Um, I just... I think it's one of the greatest things, you know, we can do is we get to come out here and play, run around the footy oval and sort of get paid to be healthy and fit and um, and get to be with your mates all the time. So it's sort of that. And then the competitive side of it, which is something I love as well. And I don't know, it's just everything about it's great except the 2 k So um, <laughs> We'll get to that Which we can get out of at times. Which are a few tricks up me sleeve in that department. I'm Andrew Russell's not listening yeah, to this. You know, I'm, sure he, I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> um, aside from the 2K, looking forward to 2024? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be um, hopefully not as much of a roller coaster as last year was, but hopefully a nice consistent year where we just win, 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 win and um, don't have too many setbacks like we did last year. So, um, yeah, a bit more cruisy year will be nice, but that's what 40 is. And um, so just whatever comes, we'll be ready for it. Cruisy would be nice, I think, is every current sport of news resolution. Yeah. Before, mate. So they can just sit back and just you enjoy, know, just see us in, in the eight the whole year and not have to worry about us jumping in and out. So, yeah, it's a, something like that would be nice. Thanks for joining the show, mate. Appreciate hey, it. No, thanks for having me. Um, enjoy the break. Enjoy your Christmas and we'll see you in the new year. You too. Thanks.